Monday, April 14, if we could all have a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before I ask the uh, town clerk to uh, do the roll call, I would like to introduce uh, once again and welcome Jackie Coy, who is a <coughs> new town clerk. And uh, so welcome. I'm sure you'll have fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, if you'd like to call the roll, uh, okay. is your first official duty. Yes. Chairman Roberts? Present. Uh, Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Carson? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor Lynch? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Swift Kayada? Here. Representative Gill? Representative Weaver? Town Manager McGovern? I'm here. And Town Clerk Coy? Here. Very good. Under reports and correspondence. I know Henry said he had something he wanted to bring up, so I'll um, right off with you. All right. And Mr. Chairman, um, the uh, Thomas Jordan um, Trust Committee met and uh, we considered a couple of applications, and, uh, some scholarship money for uh, some uh, folks in town. And uh, uh, if anybody wants specific details, they can contact either the, uh, the town manager or me. Uh, I'm the chairman of the uh, Thomas Jordan subcommittee. Um, oh, also today is my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, Susan. Uh, <laughs> and uh, of all the emails that we have received, in the last uh, three months uh, about all the issues that have come before the town. The best is one that we received yesterday morning from the Persian Gulf from uh, my wife's daughter, Abby, who said, we're coming home. Right. And so right. that, uh, <coughs> she's a <laughs> Lieutenant JG on the uh, uh, Constellation Group on a, on a cruiser called the uh, Valley Forge. Anyhow, uh, I, I received a call from Barbara Sanborn um, who is putting together a support the troops uh, get together on April 27th. That's a Sunday afternoon from 4 to 8. And uh, they're trying to get together groups uh, for uh, entertainment. And uh, she's coordinating the thing. And I told her that I would announce uh, on the, the television her telephone number is 799-7944. I believe this will be held at the high school, and it's a get-together to support the troops. And again, uh, Barbara, Sanborn, uh, Barbara Sanborn is the lady who's in, in uh, uh, organizing this event. Um, as far as the COG uh, Executive Committee, I uh, attended the last meeting, and the next meeting of the COG Executive Committee came up on, on the, the 16th of April. I will attend that. And we've been invited to meet with Governor uh, Baldacci to discuss the regionalization for um, his attempts locally to uh, try uh, to come up with some ideas for regionalization in this economy to um, economize on uh, the perhaps communities getting together on uh, various uh, services that they're going to uh, provide. Uh, finally, and most uh, happily, I attended that both sessions of the high school jazz band and, and the from the eighth grade up and I am amazed at these incredible musicians the trumpet section were blowing the bell off that trumpet and uh, the sax section sounded as tight I think as Woody Herman's sax section and those who can remember that know that's tight that's a wonderful band and uh, Tom Lazat and uh, Ralph Norris and uh, <clears throat> uh, Rick Morris and the, the uh, teachers over there have done a wonderful job working with these young people. But the young people with all those hours of practice have per turned out a real championship uh, band. And as somebody who's been associated with music all my life, I, I really appreciated that. I think it was a wonderful show and they are to be congratulated. And that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Berry. <laughs> Anyone else? Councilor Swift um, I just wanted to uh, publicize that the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, this is for everybody who may be watching, is holding a fundraiser spelling bee on May 15th at 7 p.m. in the Pond Cove Cafetorium. Um, 
as you may or may not know, the foundation is dedicated to fostering excellence in our school system by making grants for educationally important projects that are um, beyond the scope of the school budget in these fiscally tough times. So the foundation needs teams to compete and also sponsors. And were it not for the fact that we counselors have a workshop that night, I might suggest that we compete. It's team spelling, so it's not individuals, but teammates, but everyone's looking frightened over there. <laughs> so don't worry, I'm not making you sign up for this, but I do encourage everyone to um, attend and sponsor it. Um, and while I was thinking about this this afternoon, um, on a related note, um, it made me think about, I just want to mention this as a point of information, um, because it's something I plan to um, draft up, but I thought people out there in TV land might want to give some input on it. So it made me think about the number of great organizations in town that uh, do so much for our citizens. And especially in this time where we have gov limited government resources. So I thought of especially all the thoughtful citizens who have spoken very eloquently at recent public meetings on the schools, the Green Belt, Fort Williams, a whole bunch of different issues and causes. And those are all treasures that make our town such a wonderful place to, to live and to work. Many citizens here volunteer their time and their talents to make Cape a better community, and I know many in this room have done that. But I also know from their many comments during um, these public hearings and also from the IGA and Jonesies and wherever, that many people also don't have the time, but they would like to contribute and they would like to do more. They're just not exactly sure how. So I have had a light bulb go off this afternoon, um, and this is something I'd like to pursue at our next finance committee workshop. But I thought about, and this may be a crazy idea, I haven't thought this through in great length, but what about in closing with each property tax bill, um, the mailing, a form outlining how they could make a gift, they, the taxpayer, could donate a gift to one of the great organizations that um, support the towns and the school's basic purposes. And those are things like the Cape Elizabeth, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation, with the end towards making the fort eventually self-sufficient, um, or the Cape Land Trust. And of course, someone could also send a gift directly to the town if they were so inclined for a family fun day or whatever else they wanted to give a gift for. But those donations could be, my idea is that those donations could be mailed right into the tax office with the <coughs> tax bill payment, not the same check, a separate check, and the check could just be forwarded to the appropriate organization. I think Kate people are very generous, and this idea may have potential for a cheap and easy way for people to direct their gifts to the organizations that do so much for Kate. So I'm going to write this up for the Finance Committee, and I appreciate your indulgence in listening to this two-minute description of it. But um, I thought this would be a way perhaps people are watching. And if anybody has any comments, pro or con, they can reach me through the website or on the phone, or they can send me a letter or whatever. Um, but I, I appreciate uh, the, the time to just mention my, my idea. Thank you. Thank you. No other counselors? OK, we'll let Jackie step in. <laughs> um, all the town clerks in Cumberland County were asked by the Cumberland County manager to notify the <laughs> residents that um, Cumberland County commissioners have voted to place on the November 2003 ballot the establishment of a Cumberland County Charter Commission. At the same time, members of the Charter Commission will be elected. Um, the information's on the website. Basically, there's two representatives from there's three districts in Cumberland County and there's two representatives from each. Um, I have the nomination papers in my office. So if anyone is interested, they can look on the website to get the whole, what information we do have on it. And they'll come and see me. All right, very good. Rhiannon, do you have anything to say? Not this evening, all right. So what's the deadline for filing the application? Uh, May 27th. Thank you. And I have just a couple of things before we get to the manager. The uh, Marie Prager on the school board today did get the building report to us. I want to express my appreciation for that. Uh, it'll give us an opportunity now to take a look at it. The report, um, we have part of it here this evening, but there's a, about a stack this thick, for lack of a better way to describe it, in the, uh, that will be going to the library 
and there is also a couple of copies at the uh, up from the superintendent's office if anybody wishes to paw through that and take a look at it uh, anything you want to know about that school building project will be in that material so again I want to thank Marie for getting that to us one other item you may have noticed that the uh, construction signs are gone back up on route 77 the plan at this point is to start paving uh, around the second week of May and ending around the end of May. Now, obviously those schedules are flexible due to weather or whatever else. The uh, company has been asked to notify us a few days in advance, if at all possible. And I've asked the manager if we know when the work is going to be done, if we could put it on the town website so that if people so desire, they can uh, try to avoid going in that way and taking alternate routes. And so with that, I would ask the town manager if he has anything he would like to share. Just very briefly following up on that point, that is a main department of transportation project, not, not directly a town project and is being funded through the main department of transportation and <coughs> involves paving of Route 77 uh, from South Portland all the way uh, out to the first intersection of Fowler Road. Uh, with Route 77 uh, just beyond the high school. So when that does happen during the month of May, it is apt to cause some uh, traffic interruptions as, as that paving occurs. Uh, secondly, I would like to mention the refuse disposal area. Brush area will be open the next four Sundays. Uh, the hours are posted on the website uh, in the afternoon, early afternoon, uh, particularly at the prime time. And the, there will be no fees uh, assessed for the placement of uh, brush uh, during those four Sundays. So if anyone wants to bring brush leaves, uh, grass trimmings, and general winter waste. Uh, Point of clarification, uh, demolition material like a deck or anything like that, can, be brought, can that be brought over as well? The, the brush and demolition area will be open. Both, both brush and demolition. Not, not the uh, transfer station hopper. Right, thank you. Anything further? Let me get my glasses on so we'll see where we're at here. <coughs> <laughs> Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. We do have a few people in the audience. Uh, anyone care to get up and address the council on any item this evening? No, seeing none, all right. Then we will move along uh, to the minutes for uh, March 12, 2003. Do I have a motion to accept? So I move to accept the minutes of the uh, March 12th meeting. Second. And a second. Councilor swift Kayata. Any discussion? All in favor? I'm sure to be unanimous. <laughs> Item 97, 0203, approval of warrant and appointment of wardens for the May 6th municipal election. <coughs> and I will turn this over to our new town clerk, Jackie. Yeah. Uh, enclosed find the warrant for the May 6th election. Um, it is recommended that the town council sign the municipal warrant as presented. I don't know what else. <laughs> I'll move that we um, appoint Henry Adams as election warden and Jacqueline Coy as deputy warden. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? I think so. That to be unanimous also. <laughs> Item number 99, 0203. Uh, whoops, excuse me. 98. 0203 receipt of the school budget. It is recommended that school budget be referred to the finance committee. The school board has adopted a proposed budget and copies are now available at www.capolitical.com. Copies of the budget with background materials uh, are here this evening. It uh, was distributed earlier. The council has a chance to take a look at that for the next uh, before we meet with the school board. And if we could have a motion to uh, refer this to the finance committee. I move that the school budget be referred to the Finance Committee. <coughs> Second. Second. Take your pick. We had a couple. Any discussion? Uh, I would just um, note for the record and for um, anyone who's watching at home that we will be reviewing the school budget on April 28th at 7.30 here at Town Hall. Thank you. All in favor of referring to the Finance Committee. And that is unanimous. Item 990203, letter from the Scarborough Town Council. We have a letter from the Scarborough Town Council asking for our support. They consider asking for an independent audit of RWS. 
And I would, since uh, Carol Fritz, uh, Councillor Fritz is our representative to RWS, I would ask her if she could perhaps shed some light on this item for us. Okay, well, it's RWS's issues and, and um, revenue shortfall has certainly been in the, the newspaper quite a bit. <coughs> And I, I think that the IWS Executive Committee, which I serve on, has, has certainly heard um, calls for, like, like Scarborough's call, for a really in-depth look at IWS um, and recognizing that town do want more information. Um, Scarborough's proposal implies there may be some, you know, concerns about day-to-day -day operation, which I don't really think is a problem at IWS. Um, they also do say here that the audit would be paid for by IWS. Mm. Which is us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. in, indeed. I mean, IWS is our 21 community, so that cost will be part of IWS's budget, so I think we need to, to recognize that. Um, but I think the RWS's financial difficulties really stem from the fact that 21 communities got together in 1985 and built a plant to solve a regional problem of, of solid waste. And um, there was an energy crisis. And so there was a set amount of power that they, they received a certain amount of power, um, the rate for power. Um, they were also required by the state when they took out the bonds for that um, plant that uh, they would have control, flow control of the waste, which means that all the waste has to go from our towns to RWS. And 10 years later, the Supreme Court overruled that um, requirement. And also when we had deregulation of electricity a number of years ago, was a major, major change in, in RWS's revenue. And so each time that happened, we've had a ratcheting up of, of our um, assessments for handling trash. Um, also during the settlement that they got, they took part of that settlement, and, or all of the settlement, which was three and a half million dollars, and spread it out over four years, which, uh, which is ending this year, and so that's another reason the rates have gone up. Um, this really triggered the haulers realizing that, the, that RWS charged more for trash, and so they went to a different uh, plant in, in many cases. So that, that shortfall is something we really need to deal with. And um, we are going to be meeting on the 17th, this Thursday, to uh, delay payment on, on a bond and, and rewrite that and put it at the end of the payment period. Um, we are also, the executive committee has, has had a meeting and drafted a proposal for a study that would address many of the issues that are in this Scarborough um, proposal. In addition to other long-term issues that IWS really needs to, to address. Um, the idea that is proposed is that there would be three IWS members on the board, on, on the study committee three town officials from among the community um, that are not on the board, a representative from the hauling community, and a representative from the chamber or business community, um, and probably one other person. But I think that that would, you know, bring an outside look at, at uh, RWS's operation. And the idea was to look at the collections, the transportation, and disposal aspects of, of IWS. Um, so I, I think that, you know, they, this kind of study can't wait, or RWS <coughs> bonds cannot wait for this study to take place. 
there, there are timetables that need to be uh, put in place to take care of the financial issue. Or, I mean, our assessment could go up a great deal. Um, so I think this study is important for, for IWS for the long term. Um, so we need what, a motion basically to perhaps have a couple of folks. You want to make that motion? Or meet with IWS, yourself and somebody else? And She's not supporting it. Hmm? I, I, I don't exactly favor the way Scarborough has proposed it. Um, I haven't particularly developed wording for that, but um, um, I uh, possibly urging RWS um, to address financial issues and long-term issues uh, that include collection, transportation, and disposal uh, of waste for the region. Okay, I'm not sure where we need to go. John, well, quick, you uh, go. Well, don't, don't, I mean, we have to dispose of this agenda item. I think what, what Carol's talking about is an eternal issue with our WS, and we can certainly offer our, our blessing to or not. I mean, if they need to study themselves, that's fine, that's up to them. But this this request, it doesn't come with any sort of dollar figure attached to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be $10 or $100,000, and considering how, um, it's pretty comprehensive what they want to do. They're talking about engineering studies and mechanical studies and things of that nature. Um, you know, this has dollar signs written all over it to me. So, um, if we want to dispose of this agenda item, and then maybe give some direction to Carol as far as her role as on the board of directors of RWS. Um, I think that's the, the way we should go. Councilor Carson. Uh, I, I don't intend to support this. I really believe to go through this entire audit process at this time would seriously hurt the bonding and debtability of RWS at this time. Now whether RWS with the, with the addition of people from the different communities work internally to do this, that's fine for me, but to put this out to the study at this time, I'm afraid the bonding ability would be seriously damaged. So I, I'm not going to support this at this time. I'm not going to support that, uh, but it was just, um, Councilor Swift Chaotic just mentioned to me, if you look at that last sentence in, in the item number 99, it says it is recommended that the council or council representatives meet with representatives of RWS to discuss RWS issues. It's not asking us to vote on the Absolutely. Scarborough audit. Mm. I guess. So, at any rate, um, oh, okay. that, that's mine. I do not recommend an audit, support an audit. Council Swift-Kayetta. I um, agree that I cannot support the audit at this time. I'm not, I'm reserving the right maybe down the road to say yes, but obviously there are some important things like how much it would cost, um, as Councilor McGinty mentioned. I do have some, share some of the concerns mm. Councilor Carson mentioned, but I think it's, I feel somewhat ill-informed on this issue. I know what I read in the papers and everything, but I think it would be helpful before, for me at least, before I can make any uh, calm, cool, and collected decision about this and well-informed decision about um, whether or not it's necessary or not, I think it would be helpful for us, or at least some of us, to meet with <coughs> folks from RWS. I appreciate Carol bringing back the information to us, but. I think it would be helpful to get a, some, a little bit broader perspective from the people who work for RWS full time or, you know, or more people on the board. I just think it would be helpful to have more information. Um, so I, I like the recommendation of us or some of us meeting with representatives of RWS and just frankly uh, putting aside Scarborough's request at this point. It's, unclear to me exactly what their request is in that it is un for an undefined amount of money and I can't support it until I know no or not support it until I know more about the subject. All right. So I would move. Good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I would move um, that the council chair appoint, I don't know, a couple of representatives from the council um, to meet with some representatives of RWS and report back to the council as a whole so that we can be better informed and make better informed decisions. I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? If I, if I might, Mr. Chairman, 
I, I really am pleased to hear that the executive committee or this, whatever group it was met, who met last week are, are beginning to look at some of the issues of RWS and the particular issues you cited. Uh, I was one of four managers who met with the chairman of the board of RWS as well as uh, Chuck Fochier, the general manager, to discuss the need for RWS to be responsive to some of the issues that are out there in the community, not just Scarborough, but from elsewhere as well. And I, I'm pleased to hear that the executive committee is doing what it is doing. What, what I didn't hear and what you know, I'd, I'd like to have some attention upon uh, is the issue of RWS governance. Uh, you know, the board that, was, that is now in place, I don't mean the individuals on it, but the structure of the board, the structure of RWS governance has been in place for uh, <coughs> about 1985 when some of the decisions were made to go into the plant as it now is. And I would, you know, encourage the executive committee to look at the issues of governance to see if the needs of RWS in terms of the size of the board the skills and talents needed on a board are, are the same as, as were needed in the early 1980s when uh, the major decisions were made to construct what we now have there and to purchase the land that we have there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any further discussion? We have a motion to, uh, I will at some point in the very near future talk with some of the councilors to see who would be interested in doing that. and. Uh, so if we can vote on that, uh, all in favor? And that's unanimous also. <coughs> Item number 100-0203, Fort Williams Park Playscape. Uh, I'd ask the town manager to give us a brief update on what's happening there. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. The Fort Williams Park capital budget <coughs> contains $70,000 of monies that have been raised in Fort Williams that the uh, from, from different activities in the fort, uh, in rental income in the fort, that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission is recommending be spent toward the development of a playscape which be located in a small grove of trees uh, near the parking lot behind the two officers row buildings. Uh, if there's any hope to have that playground constructed this year, uh, we would need to begin the planning board process uh, possibly at the, at the next workshop in the month of May. Uh, if the council votes to begin to authorize that process, you still will be reviewing this as part of the, the budgetary process. Uh, you'll be seeing the full plans again. You'll be looking at added in the context of the master plan of Fort Williams Park, which you're also about to receive, that within which recommends that this occur. Uh, and there'll also be uh, uh, involvement in uh, probably a public hearing by the planning board. Uh, so that this is just to begin to get the process started. And I should mention that th there's also a group of uh, interested citizens uh, who were planning to uh, raise some money to supplement that 70000 to come up with an overall budget uh, closer to $100,000. Uh, they've been uh, approaching a number of groups and, uh, to do that. It's not a, a major community-wide fundraising. Uh, they're doing more of a, a targeted fundraising campaign. So I would uh, ask uh, authorization uh, to apply, to begin the process of applying to the planning board uh, for this playscape. Let's go move there. And a second? Okay. Can John get the second in on that one? <laughs> Any discussion? Councilor um, Lynch. I, I just want to say I know this has been in the works a long, long time, and there has been a very active group of citizens and following up on what Councillor Swift Teada said earlier, citizens who volunteered have put in a lot of time and money um, on the other playgrounds and this is the last piece. Um, I think it's a great idea. I would like to encourage the town, however, and this group, um, which was very successful in getting a grant, I think, for the playground right up on Scott Dial Road to explore to the greatest extent possible of grant opportunities. It strikes me that those opportunities might be greater at Fort Williams, which is a park which serves the greater Portland community, if not the nation, when you look at the license plates. So, um, but I'm very supportive of it, whether it's a grant or whether it comes out of our budget. All right. Any further? All in favor? 
you have your marching order. Seven eight nine. Item 101-0203, uh, placed it back basketball area. And again, I'll ask the town manager to address this issue, and I understand, I see Ed McElhinney here in the audience as well. So, okay. The town has had an offer from Gene and Ed McElhinney to put in a, a small basketball area at Placestead. <coughs> uh, not, a, you know, not a fancy, you know, big, big basketball court. Uh, you know, something that would be in keeping with uh, with that area there. The Since this issue has come up, though, I received a call from Cape Elizabeth Little League, the president, last Friday, and he indicated that the Little League may have an opportunity to be looking at other improvements at Playstead Park, uh, that uh, there's, there's a possibility of, of improving concessions and some other activities. and. Uh, because of that, because we, we, we would, I'd, I'd prefer to go to the planning board with one, uh, with one plan that looks at the whole rather than a couple over, you know, over several short months, I would uh, suggest that this be deferred uh, until such time as the Little League returns to the town uh, with a uh, more encompassing proposal. Uh, to see what they're going to do, and this, you know, the Little League board hasn't even looked at this yet. It's, it was fairly new news to the, the president of the Little League that, uh, you know, that there was some interest from some folks in assisting the Little League with some improvements at Place to Park. Uh, so uh, this is progressing. So I would encourage the council to defer this. So I'll move to the table this item. Okay. I'll withdraw my motion. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. No, I don't. I did not mean to cut off. Later day. <laughs> I did not mean to cut off any discussion. So I'll withdraw my motion. I want to move to defer. Well, well, we can always take it off the table. That's my understanding. Yes. Yeah. It That's doesn't true. Whatever. kill it. Okay. I was not intending to kill it. Um, mm. I I view defer as functionally equivalent. Table yeah, is right. We're done with our discussion table until we bring it off the table again. I, I just gasped only because when I hear the word table, <laughs> I know that that means if anybody has anything to say, I don't have anything brilliant to say on this, so, okay, but I just did not know if anybody wanted to say something, that's why I sort of jumped. Sorry. I'll move to table this item. <laughs> All right, I think everybody knows where we're at on that, that's fine, that, uh, this will be coming forward um, with, the, with the Little League uh, support, I assume, and would you like to say something to us? Please. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I uh, Ed Mack, 981 Shore Road. Um, I talked to Mike earlier, and since that time, and I can get you, Mark just called me. Um, I'm not at liberty to say where the money's coming from, but it's a sizable amount of money, and the plan is nothing that's going to happen now is probably not going to be there until fall. Um, and his only concern was uh, being uh, putting the before the horse ever already started the process and just promptly <laughs> stopped. Um, so I uh, consequently left a mess down there, um, which is a lovely mud hole, which doesn't affect my children, but I'm sure it'll affect every other child that goes to place the park. So his only concern was that we get it cleaned up, and even if we to loam it and seed it, we wouldn't have grass in time for the season to start. Um, so his concern at this point was to do something with it so we don't have as much mud as we can do. And I don't know what that means. I don't know when the planning board meets and how long that process could take, but I certainly can understand going over the whole plan at that time. So we'll just have to make amends to get cleaned up as best we can. We'll work with uh, Mr. McLean and yes, cooperatively to make sure it's restored. Okay. Well, I think we right. should be commended for this effort. I think it's well, uh, great. Uh, I want to get the kids out of the computer and the IM and get them out of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we appreciate the opportunity to do it. Great. Thank you, Ed. Do we need to vote? Um, yes. yes, we did. Yes, yeah, all right. Do you vote on table, will you? Yes, <laughs> you vote tables. on table. <laughs> I, I defer a motion. No, no. No, it's a table. 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 She, 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 I mean, not re she, yeah. she's, she's tabling. All, in, anyone, all in favor. <laughs> and as I understand parliamentary rules, 
anyone who's voted to table it can right. ask to take it off the table at a later point. Right. So, it does, so it's fine. Yeah. Item number 102-0203, Regional Disaster Aid Agreement. And it is recommended that Town Council authorize the Town Manager to sign the Regional Disaster Aid Agreement for Cumberland County. Uh, our Director of Emergency Management, uh, Councilor <coughs> Kennedy is here. Kelly, is there anything on that particular issue you'd like to speak to or just down below? Uh, what, what we're to do? You, you need to go to the mic, though. Charlotte County, I'm the Director of Emergency Preparedness for the Town of Cape Horsburg. And as I guess self appointed Homeland Security Director. Um, <laughs> what this agreement is trying to do is to get all the 27 towns in Cumberland County on the same playing field when it comes to a response to some type of, particularly mass, weapons of mass destruction, if I understand this specific agreement. We have any disaster. Any disaster. disaster. We have. Um, Mutual aid agreements with police departments and fire departments in the area. We just want to make sure that this is formal. All right, good. Thank you. Here we have um, a recommendation from Henry. I'd, I'd like to move that uh, the council authorize the town manager to sign a regional disaster aid agreement for Cumberland County. I'm on the uh, county uh, budget advisory committee with uh, Council McGinty and uh, uh, we heard George Flaherty, who was uh, the, uh, the county-wide manager. Uh, he's a key <coughs> in, uh, in, in this area for that. He's trying to put this gigantic project together with all of the towns and cities in, in uh, Cumberland County for this uh, the trickle down from the feds uh, program. And then, uh, now that wasn't essentially all a description, Charlie. The way and that wasn't all the motion, though, was it? No, that's the motion. I want <laughs> I could to ask Jackie if she'd gotten all of that. the town manager to sign the regional disaster aid agreement for Cumberland County. Thank sure. you. <laughs> and do we have a second? Second, sir. All right. Now, any further discussion? Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> all right. All in favor? <laughs> and item number. 103 an application to FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency Management Association, or agency rather, and is recommended the town council authorize an application to FEMA for certain fire protective gear, and I would ask the town manager perhaps to explain that one a little further. Yes, this is uh, in working regionally with a number of other communities where looking at purchasing equipment that will not only help us regionally but also locally with uh, the development of a rapid intervention team. Uh, and what that is primarily is to provide help uh, to uh, fire personnel who are down at a fire scene. It, it uh, equips them so they can go in and uh, rescue them out of a tough scene. There's a whole list here of different equipment. Uh, this is an application to the U.S. Fire Administration, which is part of what has been known as FEMA. Uh, they're changing the name to something else. I don't know what it is. FEMA, but uh, uh, we're hopeful that, you know, perhaps this might be given uh, some favorable consideration. We've applied in the past for heavier equipment, and they don't fund heavier equipment, and they've kind of sent us letters, no thank you, in the past. So, as Councilor McGinty knows, it was time for us to uh, do a more realistic application, and I think this better meets uh, what they might be looking for. Yeah, was there a price tag on this to the town itself? No, there's a 10% match. Yeah, yeah. John's, uh, John's uh, grant. And by the way, just as a point of uh, information, this was due on uh, April 11th, so it actually has been, it's been submitted. It's been submitted. Uh, it's academic, but we can still vote in, a favor, in favor of it. It can be withdrawn. Be withdrawn. Yeah, I, I move that we uh, approve the uh, application. All right, second. Second. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Now, item number 104-0203, Town Emergency Management Plan. It is recommended the Town Council approve the Town of Cape Elizabeth Emergency Urgen yeah, em I'm having a hard time with that. Elizabeth Emergency Management Plan as submitted by Director of Emergency Management, A. Charles Kennedy, and note our appreciation to Mr. Kennedy uh, and to the Cumberland County Management Agency for their assistance in preparing the plan. Uh, council did get a 
quick look at it the other night, and it is a rather massive piece of work. But in fact, uh, Charlie can show it to the cameras, I guess. And can you give us a brief explanation, Charlie? Mm -hmm. Sure. What? Charlie, can I ask one more thing? Um, what the plan does is it gives us a, a basis to start in the event we have an emergency. It's just it's outlined um, where we should go, what we should do, or what our resources are. This is a plan that is consistent with the other 27 counties, uh, towns in Cumberland County at George's direction. Um, it's also consistent with the other towns in the state. Um, what we're trying to do is develop a consistent document. Uh, one of my first charges from the manager is uh, when I was appointed director um, emergency preparedness was to draft a plan. George came through for me, so <laughs> um, here we are. It's a plan. I like to think of it as a fluid document because it is being updated regularly. George has a plan on staff that um, has all of these plans in a computer and is updating them on a regular basis for us. Um, we have six copies of the plan. The manager has one. Um, the two chiefs. Uh, Bob Malley, I have one, Dispatch has one, and we're going to make sure that those are all kept up to date. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, things I'd like some light reading, I can provide it for you. Um, I gave you what I, the piece I gave you at the, at the workshop is really, um, my, my words to executive summary is really just an option for the plan. The, the uh, Monarch notes or Cliff Notes version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Kelly, thank you very much. Well, Appreciate all your effort on that. So, do we uh, approve the plan? So, is anyone willing to uh, make a motion to do so? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Take your pick. Pick one. <laughs> any, any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. In addition to thanking Charlie and uh, George Blair and the Cumberland County Emergency Management Agency, I, I do want to thank the two counselors who, who have taken the time to uh, really <laughs> look through this plan. Uh, we didn't provide copies of it to all the counselors, uh, as has been mentioned, but uh, two counselors did look at it, and they've probably studied it probably a little more than I have, so I well, appreciate that. Since Mike is looking in my direction, I want to tell Charlie I forgot to bring yours back tonight, but I will bring it back tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. It's sitting on my kitchen table at home. But I forgot to pick it up, but I will get it back to you tomorrow. And yeah, there's no emergency, I hope. As the other glutton for punishment, I, I just want to say I did look at it, and I thought it was very thorough, and just really want to um, commend you because it was a good job. And before 911, I might have thought it was an academic exercise, but it's unfortunate we all have to be ready. So feel free to thank, thank you. you. Thank you again, Charlie. Mm. Item number 105-0203, Pond Cove Field Days at Fort Williams Park, and has recommended the Town Council authorize the use of Fort Williams Park for the Pond Cove Elementary School Field Days from June 2 through June 6. And we have a letter in our packet uh, from the school, from David Shields, the gym teacher, asking for this. And Could I before you make a motion, in, in your packet there was a letter also attached to that on the Portland Amateur Wireless Association event. Uh, that was also approved by the Fort Williams Advisory Committee I, in the commission. I inadvertently left it off the agenda. It doesn't interfere with Family Fun Day at all, and it, it is an annual event that, that occurs. And I'd also encourage in, in any motion that you might include uh, that as well. You, I'm sorry, you said it does not interfere with Family It does not Fun interfere Day. at all. So they call an amateur wireless. Uh, they have a field day. I guess it's called a field day. So if someone could make a motion to. I'd like to move that the council authorize the use of Fort Williams Park for Pond Cove Elementary School field days on June 2nd through 6th and for um, the Portland Amateur Wireless Association field day Saturday and Sunday, June 28th and 29th, 2003. And a second? Second. Any, any discussion? Just a procedural question. Um, can you uh, add a, a thing like that uh, without it being on the agenda? It's not a sub sub substantive change. So is I that think, what it is? I think, yeah. Okay. To, to be technically correct, you know, you might want to take an item out of order uh, if you, you know, chose to mm -hmm. improve okay. that as well, or, or you could consider it under the umbrella.
relevant item number 105. It's really up to the discretion of the council. I don't want to overwork minutia. <laughs> I, I think that since it was in the packet, yeah. it's obvious that it was just a clerical kind of error, uh, omission to, to leave the title. By that the manager. Up. By the manager, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to point the finger at anybody else. <laughs> By the manager. Um, but it was the in question. the packet. So move the question. All right. All in favor? <laughs> it is unanimous as well. And we are now back to citizens' discussions of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Mike Moles. I live at 423 Ocean House Road. And I just want to mention one thing. Uh, there was a presentation at the school Thursday and Friday morning as part of the Every 15 Minutes program, which went over quite well and was very well received uh, by the students. It was very thought-provoking. It really brought home the dangers of drinking and driving. And I, I just wanted to applaud all the town departments that work in concert to make that happen so well. So that's all I just want to say about that. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak? No. <laughs> yeah. So that, if I had a title and adjournment, uh, I just want to list some of the meetings that we are having. Uh, the Finance Committee Budget Workshop will be April 17th at 6 p.m. Um, I believe that we have indicated that we will allow anyone who had transportation problems and could not get out before will be allowed to speak if they would like. Uh, on April 28th, we will also be meeting at 7.30 that evening. The, uh, count, the uh, and that will, and then council town, town council workshop on revaluation, everyone we're all going to love, on April 30th at uh, 7.30. The next regular town council meeting will be Monday, May 12th, 7.30. And the public hearing on the proposed budget will be held that night as well on uh, May 12th at 7.30. And as again, as a note, uh, the municipal election is Tuesday, May 6th. Encourage everyone to get out and vote. That it is your your civic duty to do so. And the council, if we can have an adjournment, and then we will Jack, reconvene. Um, yes. One thing I, I thought we were going to point out that the town council workshop on the revaluation on April 30th at 7.30, it's my understanding it will be televised. It will be televised. For the purpose of giving the public the same education about the process and the timing. So I just wanted to make sure people who are watching at home know that. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah. I should have said that. Michael. In the meeting on the 28th at 7.30, that's a, to go over the school budget. At the conclusion of that meeting, it, it is anticipated to be a special town council meeting that will not be televised for the purpose of setting the budget to public hearing uh, on May 12th. It will be a series of, of draft motions based on whatever numbers you come up with. Uh, amount oh, to come up with so following that workshop. Because, just so people understand, because the numbers have to be specifically set and announced before the actual That's uh, right. We have to give seven-day notice. Seven-day notice. Did I miss anything? Other than that. <laughs> All right. We can, uh, the council needs to adjourn, and we will go to the back, uh, the conference room to meet as the Thomas Jordan Trust uh, mm -hmm. group. So, Board of directors. Yeah. And we can actually we can do it right here, but the cameras will be turned off. It's, it's not a closed session. They're welcome to stay if they'd like, or you can come down and join us. So, motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much.